the meeting was attended by senior officers from the education uh, sector of the Pacific, uh, of the first members states, uh, Cook Islands, federal states of Micronesia, Fiji, Kribati, Nauru, Nui, Papua New Guinea, Palau, Republic of Marshall Islands, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tokelau, Tonga, Tuvalu, Vanuatu, uh, with our development partners and CSOs as observers. Day one started with uh, welcoming and then over chair. Before that, official opening was uh, done by our Honorable Minister for Education, Jimmy Uguro, representing the government of Papua New Guinea. In his welcome, and the welcome was made after our cultural performance from Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea, as was indicated, as was told uh, during the before the official opening that in our culture or here in Papua New Guinea, we normally welcome them with cultural activities and that. So thank you. In his remarks, in his opening remarks, Mr. Uguro emphasized the, the importance of building resilience for education system during the pandemics or during the national disaster or pandemics. Uh, as he stated that we, uh, we are vulnerable for uh, any one of these in our region. He also stated that he also acknowledged your participation and also acknowledged the diverse culture of Papua New Guinea and other Pacific states. And he stated that his PNG is committed to education and the SDGs, the stand, uh, SDGs of the United Nations. Another speaker during the official opening was Dr. Stephanie, Assistant Director General for Education. In her remarks, she emphasized the importance of capacity development for our teachers. Especially in this challenging time. Also as Nisa, our director from uh, UNESCO office in the region, she emphasized the importance of collective action by first throughout education levels, responding to diverse needs and with efforts to reduce the digital divide. She assured UNESCO support and priorities and actions identified through this meeting. Then we have the handover and takeover actually taking place the outgoing chair, better, and over the session to our secretary, Dr. Combra. Dr. Combra, in accepting the chair, he made a remark that a PNG is concerned over inequalities in education at a time of pandemic. He emphasized the importance of building disaster resilient education infrastructure, capacity building to provide inclusive education for early childhood to tertiary and to ensure uh, learning pathways, uh, including Tibet. First members accepted the meetings, uh, then he went through the meeting program agendas. The first members accepted the agenda and the program. Session two was on Telenor, representative from the three regions uh, present regarding the three topics that were put in, and they all emphasize the importance of, of our culture being used in our education systems. And the roles of parents in our education system as well, and the use of models, teaching models, in so to, that education is continued in our remote locations, such as our islands and atolls, which do not have a internet or multimedia. Session three was about data for advancing education. Gregory 
from the Pacific community said that uh, development said the development of regional SDG4 benchmarking was agreed at FEDM 2021 in April and renewed key indicators. The moderator, uh, Rosan from UIS requested test members consideration and decision on the SDG benchmarking process as presented during the session. The decision was made. Uh, the decision is committed to uh, all as uh, past members committed to establish national benchmarks by September 30th this year. Session four, to make take presentation and uh, decisions, education quality and relevance. Uh, the session featured three presentations on education quality and relevance. In particular, uh, considerations to ensure continuity of quality education for all, including the marginalized populations at the time of pandemic and other adverse situations. Moderator Angela Jokhan, the Permanent Secretary for Government of Fiji, commented on the challenges of equitable access to digital tools and importance of integrities involved in various delivery mode of education. Session five, thematic, uh, thematic uh, presentation on discussions on teacher professionalism. This session on teacher professionalism discussed some considerations to help prepare, promote, teachers' professionalism and continuous professional development, as well as strategies to empower parents in support of children's education. The closing remarks for the day, the, this uh, second day was made by, uh, the first day was made by Darina. She emphasized the importance of building resilience in the education system through collaboration and capacity building. Second day, we start with session six, backup implementation and mail. Decision was made uh, on backup implementation. Uh, PES noted a report of status and next steps in the program implementation, agreed to the intention of PFU and IA to all country consultations regarding country priorities and timeline for implementation. Mandated the steering committee SC to take the lead in review of PECRAP implementation development of the annual update of the implementation rolling plan and to oversee the development of proposal to the PES and CPM for PECRAP PES to IRP. The next one was on steering committee paper. First, noted the report from the steering committee, uh, considered a communication mechanism for the steering committee with other members of their group. Considered communication mechanism for the steering committee with other members of the group. And can I encourage countries representing the various groups in the steering committee to ensure participation at all steering committee meetings, either through the PES member or delegate. Task the steering committee in regular consultation with the full PES, prepare the agenda and working procedures for the first conference of Pacific Education Ministers to be held in 2023. The next one was on PECREP mail. Has established a functional and sustainable national mail framework with relevant standards and mechanisms to feed on the PECRAP mail effectively and efficiently. Collated findings, findings through mail as an effective basis for further action to bring about a suitable policy changes for future improvement and education in the region. 
the last one is on PES and PRIF PES. Accepted the regional review of inclusive education on behalf of the FEDM as per the decision of ministers at FEDM. Agree that the FRIP and its guidance to inclusive participation inclusive practices in FACREP outcomes and implementation be a standing agenda item on the steering committee agenda, starting with a summary of the PREP mapping to FACREP developed by the IE task force. First agree that the countries to pre participate in a, PET, a further regional review of inclusive education midway through PACRAP implementation, utilizing the, utilizing the focus areas of PREP to guide the review. Session seven was on them thematic presentation and discussions, learning pathways and students' outcomes and well being. This session discussed challenges and priorities for further action in Tibet, in particular to address youth unemployment and gender equality. The session also addressed regional support on qualifications framework. Ms. Jenlin Chapman from APT said initiatives and considerations to promote gender equality in Pacrap uh, in Pacific Tibet. First discuss how countries can utilize regional programs and partners. The role of NGOs in a accreditation and importance of connecting learning pathways from basic to higher education. Uh, education. Uh, no decision was made on this one. Session eight, thematic presentation and decisions, learning pathways and students outcomes and well-being. The session was continuation from session seven with focus on higher education. The presentation by Dr. Li Bing Wang, UNESCO focus on consideration for quality assurance of higher education in the Pacific, in particular in the ongoing transformation to online and blended learning. Closing remarks by on day two was made by Chair Dr. Combra. Uh, he emphasized the importance of regional and global partnership among different departments and ministers, ministries, higher education, and research institutions, develop partner, development partners, and private sector to ensure quality Tibet and higher education. Day three, the seventh international conference on adult education will be hosted by Morocco in 2022. The conference will be examining effective adult learning and education policies and practices to achieve lifelong learning within the framework of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Dr. Combra, Secretary for Education, Papua New Guinea, launched the regional consultation. Session 10, in this, uh, uh, <clears throat> there was a breakout into groups. Uh, participants discussed in three different groups. Uh, group A uh, was Australia, PG, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, one, one, two. Moderator was Kilala. Dr. Kilala, rapporteur was uh, uh, Tefora Wright. Group B was Kiribati, RMI, FSM, Palau, and Nauru. Moderator was Jake Kalista. And the rapporteur was analysis professor. Sorry if I don't pronounce your name well. Group C, Cook Islands, New Zealand, New Wales, and Samoa. Samoa, Tukalau, Tukalau, Tonga, and Tuvalu. Moderator was Shelly Abraham, and reporter was Sadie Morrison. In each group, country representatives said their following updates, followed by a question and answer and discussion. Share of art, adult learning, education. Specific challenges and priorities for future action to promote alley concepts and practices impact of COVID-19 crisis on ALE and innovative practices in citizenship education. Prospects of sub-regional presentation. In session 11, in the recommendations, the Pacific member states 
CSOs, representatives, and stakeholders protest the need for adequate funding, equitable access to ICT, including offline resources, inclusion of mother language, uh, incorporating culture and heritage in Ale, awareness raising and reducing social st stigma for Ale, and gaining political will in support for Ale, backed with the data and evidence base, among other issues. First members and participants renewed understanding that Ale is an integral part of education for all and lifelong learning. The consultation explored new ways to bring together traditional knowledge and innovations through Ale for the Pacific youth and adults flourish as global citizens and build a reputable and resilient society. Therefore, a close business session for PES, uh, the business decisions will be reviewed, sent by email, and then that uh, uh, will be reported to all members or the participants. Those are the outcomes of the meeting, and I now leave the floor open for any discussions through the chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Joseph, uh, our UNESCO Office and PMG for the presentation of the, uh, the draft outcomes for past 2014, uh, 2024th, um, Members, uh, colleagues, I'd like to now open the floor for any uh, changes you would like or edits you would like to make to the presentation. The floor is now open for your input. Any comments, Any edits? Uh, Felipe, did I see you end up? No? Hello, Chair. Yes, yes. Felipe, Were you trying yes. to make a comment, Philip? Yes, you have the floor. Yes, Chair, sorry. I was just uh, saying that because uh, some important decisions were made at the uh, at the uh, closed meeting on PACREF. So we'll just have PACREF. So we we'll have to await the, the decision and the outcomes from the closed meeting. I, I agree there were some very important decisions made by the closed meeting. Um, as we've agreed to earlier, or it's been decided earlier on, uh, we will uh, definitely make those uh, decisions available uh, through email, hopefully by next week, if possible. Thank you, Chair. Any further comments, questions? Yeah. Uh, Chair, I'll if I may, can I yes. ask a, a follow-up to Felipe's question? Um, are you able to confirm whether the outcomes document will be um, approved by the FES members without further um, circulation to, to other partners? Um, or will it be discussed by FES members and then provided for further comment to other stakeholders? Thank you. The decisions made by the uh, past members, uh, as we have, um, if, if I take it correctly, we, we will circulate the 
uh, decisions within the members and will that could affirm the uh, final decisions that we have made uh, and later on we will circulate to every member and I would think that the decisions made by PES will remain the decisions of PES and, and we will inform you accordingly. Thank you, Chair. Can I please then request that the outcomes document reflects that New Zealand attended the FAS meeting as a member of FAS in our capacity as the, a member of the Pacific Islands Forum. Thank you. Um, yes, we did make a decision on that and that should be, uh, you should be advised in due time. Any further comments? <clears throat> Uh, if I may chair, no further... I, I, I support the outcomes document for, uh, by Joseph and I just wish on uh, behalf of the team to convey my gratitude to yourself, Babu Nikini, for being excellent hosts uh, of this virtual meeting. Thank you all the members, uh, donor partners, uh, especially the Secretariat UNESCO for all the arrangements and um, despite other members who are not able to connect due to internet connectivity. Thank you so much for a uh, tough but very productive week uh, that we've had and hopefully when we meet at the next phase in 2023, all the borders will be open so we can uh, deliberate face to face. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bertha, for uh, those kind words. And thank you for your uh, support as the former uh, or the last chairperson of the past, you, you've contributed very well to this past, and I thank you. Would there be any further comments? Otherwise, I would ask the past yeah. to yeah. adopt the. Filippo? Have... Yeah, thank you, Chair. Filippo. Just a last comment, uh, Chair, just to uh, inform the PES uh, members that uh, uh, the steering committee that was appointed in 2019 and chaired by Niue, uh, just to say that they have performed very well uh, their role in terms of the mandate that they were given. PFU as secretariat to the steering committee uh, is very uh, appreciative of the hard work of the steering committee. So uh, special thanks to Bertha, the chair of the uh, steering committee, uh, who has worked hard to progress the decisions that you made in 2019. It has greatly progressed the uh, implementation of PACREF and resulting in the funding being uh, approved by GPE and we're really grateful. So some of the recommendations that were brought uh, to the best uh, were to strengthen from the lessons learned through the year of their memberships, what they saw could be strengthened in terms of the, uh, the role and functions of the steering committee. So thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, Philippe. I also thank you and you too. Philippe, I also thank you and your team for the support you've given the steering committee as the implementation uh, unit. You've given us that support to make sure that the PACRIF uh, programs and are actually being implemented. So thank you to Philippe and your team.
Um, if there's no further comment, I'd like uh, uh, to request uh, PESH to adopt the meeting outcome document. Can someone move a motion? Chair Palau moves a motion to adopt the outcomes document. I second. Uh, when accepts. Do we all agree? Yay. Any objections? Better? Agree? Agree. Everybody agrees. <laughs> Solomon Islands agrees. Thank you. Tuvalu agrees right. as well. Thank you. Tuvalu agrees. All right, that Agree. Uh, looks like we have the majority that's of the pass. Um, Tuvalu agrees, yes. Um, from the indications, I would now take that the uh, this pass has adopted the meeting document uh, that has been presented uh, to us thank you very much uh, we shall now go into the final part of our uh, session uh, which will be the closing remarks Uh, in closing, let me first, uh, for the closing session, we would like to firstly invite uh, Ms. Mona uh, Marinescu, the UN Resident Coordinator for Samoa Multi-Country Office covering Samoa, South Cook Islands, Niue, and Tokelau to share her remarks. Chair, thank you so very much. Excellencies, uh, representatives of the governments of the Pacific and um, the government of uh, Papua New Guinea, the host uh, country for this uh, virtual uh, deliberation. I just want to congratulate you all on some very intense discussions that have led to the outcome document and also to um, appreciate the adoption of the outcome document. On behalf of the United Nations, I just want to, in Pacific, I just want to share a few thoughts. First of all, in our analysis of uh, what matters to the uh, progress against the SDGs, education um, ranks the highest. This is something that we all know. Uh, however, unfortunately, the portfolio remains unfunded. So our um, focus moving forward into our next cooperation framework, as you know, the United Nations operates on a five-year cooperation framework, would be to put education at the center recognizing the importance of this particular area to ensure that countries have strong human capitals. Human capitals remain the most important part of national wealth and uh, enabling uh, UNESCO as our key organization in that area to support you in all your endeavors throughout the priorities outlined in the outcome document. It is therefore our kind request that the outcome document be um, uh, shared with the, the United Nations in this process of developing the next cooperation framework for uh, the entire Pacific. The process again is ongoing. We are conducting a comprehensive country assessment and then from there building the actual cooperation framework with specific results per country. The same applies to Papua New Guinea. So this is a process that is unfolding and your outcome document is extremely important. The second point that I want you to make is that this portfolio remains highly unfunded, unfortunately. In the Pacific, we still see uh, much more uh, financing towards the climate, the environment agenda, for all the good reasons we all know. However, there are a series of social objectives that remain underfunded. Education is one of them, obviously health. We've learned a tough lesson during COVAX. The same applies to uh, gender equality, to social protection. So we would like to take this opportunity to uh, reopen conversations with our donor parties in the Pacific and reprioritize areas in which we want to work, starting with education. There is great scope uh, in the Pacific to ensure that um, access to technology supports education everywhere. 
in remote areas, in rural areas where children would benefit a lot by being uh, able to use digital resources in their education process. There's a lot that we can continue to uh, do together. Strengthening the capacity of teachers working closely again at the um, school level to ensure the education process is of high quality and meeting international standards. I just wanted to uh, provide this commitment on behalf of the UN family in the Pacific to thank our donors uh, who uh, have contributed a lot to the work to date and uh, New Zealand and Australia and, and Japan, the United States, the European Union, our great partners, the United Kingdom, and hopefully to um, have an opportunity to rediscuss our priorities centering the work on uh, education. And a good uh, word of thank you to uh, UNESCO for um, shouldering this effort for the great work that the organization is doing and for its great importance in ensuring that we move ahead towards sustainable development in the region. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Simona, for those um, comprehensive uh, remarks, but very briefly. But we uh, thank you so much for your assurance and commitment to continue to support the possible countries in this regard. So thank you for your comments. May I now invite uh, Nisha, the Director of the Office and Representative of the Pacific, UNESCO Office in Apia and the Pacific States to provide her concluding remarks. Nisha. Thank you very much, Chair. Distinguished case members and colleagues from the education sector in the Pacific, and our resident coordinator for four of the uh, Pacific Island countries and territories, uh, Simona Marinescu. Thank you very much for your comments so far, feedback so far. I think the closing decisions and outcomes have been well covered by Joseph. I could only add that I enjoyed this opportunity tremendously. And as much as these are marathon sessions, and particularly feel so because we are doing it online, it is important for us, both as educators, leaders in education, individuals responsible for steering a whole generation of population and continuously guiding the adult population towards learning, that we keep our eyes and minds open to change. It's particularly important in current context that we are not blindsided by something we do not anticipate as we know how systematically, how comprehensively and how um, strongly we have been surprised by COVID-19. So conversations like these help in this process moving forward. Uh, the second point I think, and the last point that I would like to make is that indeed the Pacific and education systems are independent public institutions. Some also have private institutions, faith-based organizations and civil society organizations contributing to the sector. And we may have varying approaches but if we try and bring our different and respective strengths to the discussion, and we build a dialogue, or as it is called in the Pacific, Talanoa, founded on diversity and a basic commitment to education, I think the outcomes are bound to be good. And I thank Simona for 
offering to take the outcome document uh, to the cooperation, UN cooperation framework. And I can only say that if this happens, indeed, the young population of the Pacific would be better served, would benefit. So thank you so much. And particularly, I want to thank Dattha, our previous chair of the 23rd phase for her excellent collaboration, solidarity and support. Also, the uh, follow-up work that required intensive cooperation with IFONO, with the Program Facilitation Unit of PACREF, Felipe and his colleagues there. Thank you so much. And to our partners, development partners in particular, that thank you so much for being part of this process. This is the beauty of phase that it brings everybody together. We may have completely different approaches, very different way of doing things, but it's a forum that gives everyone an opportunity to bring the strength of their voice in highlighting the importance of education. So let's continue to keep our minds open our wits sharp and our course full of commitment. And let's retain some sense of humor too, because difficult decisions without humor are difficult to deal with. So thank you so much, Chair, for your excellent uh, deliberations and leadership over the last four days and for bringing us here and thanks to your team as well. Thank you and over to you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Nisa, uh, for your concluding remarks. Uh, before we close, let me make a few remarks as well to uh, conclude our, our meeting. Uh, ministers, Ministers, colleague heads of the education systems in the Pacific, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of the 24th consultations for the Pacific Heads of Education Systems, or PES. It was an interesting yet meaningful week of consultations. I'm saying interesting because of the fact that this is the first ever international event that we have hosted successfully through Zoom, uh, through Zoom, Zoom, despite some minor setbacks at the beginning and throughout, especially in internet connectivity with uh, some members of the Pacific. But before I continue, I thank my colleague heads of education systems in the Pacific, our development partners, our stakeholders who zoomed in throughout the Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, Germany, uh, Thailand, the UNESCO head office in Paris and elsewhere to observe our daily presentations and discussions since Tuesday. My heartfelt appreciation goes to the UNESCO office in Apia and in particular Aya and Nisha for the assistance and guidance in the day-to-day -day running of the meetings. And also I'd like to express our gratitude to Mrs. Anne Marie Corner and Joseph Auli and their technical staff in Papua New Guinea for putting together the country presentations and the organization of the venue here at the Crown Hotel in Port Moresby. The consultations began with how our shared Pacific cultures and values can contribute to enhance our resilience and help one another, including those who are marginalized. As the globally agreed deadline for achievements of quality education draws near, our interventions and commitments must accelerate to progress the implementation and achievement of sustainable development goal number four. The PACREF 2018 to 2030 will continue to serve as a roadmap to promote equitable access to high quality education by all Pacific Island countries and in turn achieve those desired outcomes. 
the proposal to review the delivery of inclusive education in the Pacific is also very important in order to achieve SDG 4. Our teachers' roles are no doubt central to quality education and continuous training and capacity development of our teachers goes a long way in our efforts to achieve SDG 4 targets. A partnership in the development of education is very important, especially in ensuring that learning pathways and students' well being through Tibet and higher education are achieved. We've achieved much through Tibet skills development, but challenges still remain. COVID-19 has actually brought about challenges that we have all faced, but these challenges were considered as opportunities because we were able to transform our education systems to be more resilient against future disasters and emergencies. Our ongoing efforts and collaborations towards achieving the SDG goal four, uh, goal four targets and the same principles of leaving no child behind must also apply to adult learning and education. We identified progress, but gaps in our knowledge and data have been discussed and potential ways to move forward as through regional collaboration. As the past chair, I take these discussions and recommendations forward for our common good and through technical guidance from our steering committee, a firm collaboration with past members, our friends in UNESCO and other development partners I believe strongly that we will be able to make progress in the years ahead. Finally, I thank each and every one of you again for your active participation in the meetings. And this now concludes the 24th first consultation meeting hosted by PNG in Port Moresby. Thank you, goodbye and Bamahuta. Just a small bit of administrative information with a round of applause to the chair and his team. I can see Tufawa is already clapping. <laughs> Thank you, Kana. Thank you, Babu Nikili. Well done. Thank you very much for your kind words. And uh, now back to being UNESCO. I'm just providing a little reminder to our secretary generals who wear the hat of the uh, heads of education system as well, that our national commission meeting was delayed by an hour. And we will begin that meeting um, in another five minutes. So if you could please click check your inboxes and click on the link and connect there. Please feel free to take five minutes break, but please do join because we have some important decisions to make there as well, concerning the 41st session of the General Conference, UNESCO field reforms, and a number of other issues. So I look forward to seeing you in the next meeting. Thank you very much and have a pleasant evening, afternoon, everyone. <laughs>